screwdriver, not brushing this way, but actually holding the brush with my hand that I don't paint with, deciding where I'm going to have a horizon in there that I haven't established, but we, maybe we should put that in. But since I'm ready for this step, let's go up into the light glow area, put the brush to the canvas, and literally just rotate and screw in the sun. And it gives a little light spot, and the brush will actually form a nice circular area. And you can do that a couple of times until you build it up to the level that you feel is bright enough. While I have this brush in my hand, I'll go down to that orange because the white will mix with the orange and add just a touch of ochre to it. And we'll find that horizon that's off there in the distance. And we want to try to keep this fairly straight, but your water is not your important part of this composition. So let's come in and just below the sun area, just kind of skim the surface. Notice how easily the paints move. They're very soft paints. So that helps complement the approach that I'm working wet on wet. And of course, the oil stay wet so you can play and develop this farther. So that creates kind of like a horizon. And I need to stand back to make sure I get that as level as I can working at this speed. OK, to create drama on the water, you can use a palette knife. And there are a couple of different knives we can use. I think we'll work with the painting knife. Go to the palette and load up some titanium white. And just come right underneath the sun area and just touch that line and bring in a few little sparkle lines down just directly underneath it. Just kind of lightly touching the canvas. You could do this with a liner brush also, but I just want to have a little impact of glimmer on the, the water. Once again, the water's not the important part. What we're going to be doing in the next step as we develop the painting is that we're going to create a foundation of color for the grasses. Now, I'm going through these steps fairly fast so I can get to the detail work because it's the detail work and the little grasses and the sea oats that uh, develop this painting and really give the painting its character. If you look at it in its rough stage right now, if we'll go up to the canvas and just look at the stage that it's in right now, just some shadows of the blues on the sand and, of course, your bright glow in the sky. And, of course, we have some blue sky up above. If you back up just a little bit, I think you can see that full overflowing balance of your sky colors into your sand colors. It's, if we'll go to the finished painting just for a moment, I think then you can kind of visualize a little better or see how those grasses are going to contrast against that lighter area of the sky. In the finished painting, I have a little white in the clouds, but I'm not going to uh, worry about that at this stage because I want to get to the other uh, steps of the grasses. They are the most important. So these other uh, stages are a block in that I uh, can build on. What I have done to prepare my paints to work in a technique that we're going to do and push the grasses up, we're not going to paint them so much as we're going to just kind of lay paint on a canvas and push that paint up and allow it to visually grow and to literally grow. What I've done is gone to my palette, and if you come down to the palette, I have uh, a couple of mixes I'm going to be using. I've taken some yellow ochre, and I used a fan brush, and I dropped thinner into it until I softened that to a very creamy, creamy mixture. It performs like mustard, so you can kind of think of mustard or mayonnaise in its uh, consistency. Once I mixed that mix, I went over to a little Prussian blue with a little ochre still left on the knife. That's going to give it a greenish cast. So if you leave ochre, it's okay. Bring a little ochre, mix some Prussian blue, and add a little bit of burnt umber for real dark, it's kind of a greenish brown. It's not a pretty color, but it's a good, dark, rich, vibrant color. And it has a slight cast of green to it. I also added a little thinner to that. The best way to add your thinner is use a dry fan brush and just drop little drops occasionally into it until you feel the consistency of the paint. And I want to make sure I have enough of that mix so I don't run out. And I've just got a second mix or a medium tone. It looks almost black, maybe a touch of yellow in that. Give it a little bit more of a green cast. Although I want these grasses to be more dry than I want them to be uh, green. Then I'm going to go over to my burnt umber, which is my warm, warm brown. And I pre-mixed it just a little bit and softened it. So the consistency of the paints is what I'm concerning myself. So they will perform and move very easily on the canvas. Now, when I try to teach this to students in a classroom session, it scares them to death to actually apply the paints as I'm going to apply them right now. But you kind of have to get used to it and practice a little bit. And you can practice on newspaper before you go to a canvas. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to use a painting knife. And we're going to lift up first some of the yellow ochre. And then we're going to go up to the canvas. 
and we're literally just going to kind of lay on a little glob of paint. Now, it doesn't look like much, but this is exactly how I would want the students or would like you to try to do it. I'm going to load some more paint, and once again, I'm starting with the light color and tap a little bit over there. You don't want to form a hard line or look like just a little arch there. Let's just block in some color, just lay that paint on, and I'm putting it on fairly heavily. Picking up a little more, let's go maybe a little patch right over in here. Just laying that on. Now this is going to be fun because we now have to develop into the warmer tone or the burnt umber, which I'm using it just about straight, but it's thin down, and lay that in right underneath it. Sometimes I put the umber at this level, and I'm making kind of a sandwich effect, the ochre, then the umber, and then I'm going to use the black green kind of at the baseline. A little more umber, and just kind of tap it around. It intermixes slightly. Notice how I let it just kind of tap around and leave little marks and interesting things happening. This makes you wonder if this is really going to work, doesn't it? I know it'll work because I've done it a number of times, and it's a fun way to do it. <coughs> okay, now let's go in with our darkest value, or the darkest mixed. And that, of course, has that little bit of a greenish cast. Sometimes I use more blue. Pick up a little bit on the palette knife, come up to the canvas, and put a little bit underneath there. Now, I have some students who don't give themselves enough paint, and other students who give themselves too much. So you have to practice at this. It's practice that helps you understand these techniques and get them to work for you. Gosh, does that look kind of funny at this stage. But can you notice really mostly the contrast, the values, the fact that I'm looking for interesting effects in the color of the paints? You can use this for all green grasses or a lot of different things. But once again, I'm just getting the paint on the canvas, and that's what we're really at this stage trying to do. And here's the fun part that makes this work. It's almost kind of amazing. They call it magic, and I guess this is what you'd call the magic parts of it, is allowing that paint to grow. And we're not going to brush it up. This is one thing I want to stress. Do not take a brush, touch into it, and stroke. You want to hold the brush, and I've got two here. I have got a stiff bristle fan brush and a very soft, delicate little uh, fan brush, which will push the paint in two different ways. I'm going to use this brush parallel to the surface, holding it very loosely so it's just kind of dangling in my fingers, and I'm going to catch underneath the paint, and in the center of where I want a clump of grass, I'm going to lift and just push that paint and let it just graze and skim up, and the paints begin to intermix. And as I kind of skim the surface, I get the little weeds and grasses, and notice the interplay of color that happens. If I get too much paint on the brush, I can wipe it on a paper towel and let a little interesting grass grow up over here. Just gently, no pressure. We can even let it kind of turn its little line. Now, doesn't that begin to look a little bit like grass is playing in there? Here's a little clump here. And once again, I'll develop these a little farther, very gently. If I get too much paint, I just gently wipe the brush. Now, that's a fun way to make grass. Grows very quickly, gives you an assortment of colors. If you want, you can switch to the softer brush and come in real close, and I'll show you how we taper down or we make smaller, finer grasses. This is clean and dry. I'm going to just gently just lift and put little runners or feeder roots that kind of just tap down and hug the ground. And you can just lightly use the paint that's on the canvas in a lot of cases, or let it grow a little taller. Or because this is softer, you can get more delicate lines that just kind of seem to float up. And I'm letting a few hairs kind of graze that paint and grow. That's a lot of fun to do. Let's just soften that up a little bit and add down here in the bottom right hand corner a few more little runners. You could add paint to this brush if you find you need it. Up the hill, down the hill, there's just lots of ways you can design this. Let's put a little bit out here, a little small clump. All I'm doing is using the paint that I picked up here and there and kind of connecting to and creating those little roots hanging on to the paint. Okay, I think that's going to be enough, and I think you can see how underneath the sand begins to have a nice play of color, and you don't have to worry too much. Let's develop that. Now's where I really want to concern myself with the structure of the grasses. That's a foundation. It's kind of like a block in with color interest that I can build on. So as I take the liner brush, that I'm going to use just with a little thinner. This is what I find very interesting. Since our paints are soft, and they move very easily. They're not sticky paints. You have to remember that. Cream your paints or, or get a creamy body paint and then thin it with a little thinner. 
You don't really need oil. And you can use just thinner. Now this is turp on the brush. And the paint will already move that's on the canvas. Start off when you go up to the canvas and use the paint that's on the canvas. Take the liner with a little bit of thinner and just stretch that paint. Pull individual long, delicate blades up. And create a clump of grass. Let's go over here to the right for a moment. And create a clump of grass maybe that uh, is taller in the center. We're going to put some oats on this. Maybe a few coming from off the side. Borrow paint. Go over here and bar a little of that dark and uh, pull in maybe some grasses off the edge of the canvas or peeking in. And they're maybe in shadow. I'm going to come down here maybe into the front foreground and pull some tall, delicate little individual blades up. So I work with the paint that's on the canvas. Now remember the foundation that we had built earlier on the canvas, maybe a few that break the horizon over here. Just these look like they're in a little bit of a shadow. That was some of the darker color stood out there gives it a little distance. This is where you can spend lots of time